So you tried to build your personal brand and either gave up, got stuck, or lost all hope. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I've grown my own personal brand, my clients' personal brands, and all of the benefits and exactly what to avoid in order to get your personal brand to make you more revenue and sales in your business. The only way you can justify building your audience, putting content out there, and getting the authority behind your brand name and who you are in your industry is through generating revenue and sales through all of those activities. So how do you build your personal brand in 2022 though? What should you be posting? And most importantly, where should you be posting it? And how do you actually generate money from that? These are the questions that people ask me all the time when it comes to their personal brand. And mainly the hardest part I see for people is actually getting their personal brand started. For me, the personal brand that I've built is all about who I want to be perceived as in my marketplace. Online marketing, social media, these platforms are now becoming the priority over what you actually say and do in real life. So that leads me to our personal brand strategy. What do you guys need to be posting? How many posts should you be putting up? How do you actually get started with getting your personal brand, the attention and awareness you need in your marketplace, right? That's what this is about. So. The way that I did it, the first thing I did when I started with my personal branding, 2016, we went and got a credit card, bought a Nikon DSLR camera. My fiance, Holly, I said, look, I need some help. Follow me around. I'm gonna put some suits on and I want you to just take photographs of me in all of these different environments, wearing different color ties, different um, outfits, and I need that content because I wanna post it and start talking about different subjects regarding marketing, regarding Facebook ads, social media, all of these subjects, I need something in terms of an image or a video to post so that I can talk about these subjects. Setting up a personal branding shoot, guys, is all about having a solid plan. Now, the different things I want you to consider in your personal branding plan are as follows. First thing you need is a plan about what type of content themes you want to talk about. One of the best ways to use and generate engagement is by telling stories about yourself your business or your clients even telling third party stories which is another category which are stories that have nothing to do with you let's say there's just been an amazing case study that's come out on facebook you're a facebook advertiser for example you can talk about that right that's content that's something that actually you're in the know about so when you share that to people who aren't in the know about it it raises your expert positioning by the smallest degree. But when you do that over and over and over again, guys, all of a sudden your authority starts to gain momentum and people start to see you as the go-to person in their network for whatever it is you're amazing at and what you've been putting out there. So the themes, educational content, is it entertainment? Is it uh, inspirational content? Is it vulnerable content? Look, vulnerable content could be you sharing some of the failures, the losses, and often, guys, you can relate to more people with your failures and your losses and your weaknesses than you can with your successes and your triumphs. Let me just say that again. You can relate to more people, generally speaking, about your failures because we all experience more failures than successes generally in life than you would by just sharing your successes. Those are four different themes that you can start producing content around. The next thing you wanna do is start looking at your environment. Now, the only effective way to make content for your personal brand that I've experienced, you need to be able to automate this process. And the first step to automate in the process is by batch producing the content, guys. You've got to be able to produce lots of content in a small window of time to make it efficient for you to actually do that and produce that. So that's writing the captions in bulk. That's writing the plan and knowing what you're going to do. That's shooting the videos, the images, the short form content versus the long term content in your in your strategy. Short term content would be, you know, your Instagram stuff, your stories, long longer form content, sorry, not term, longer form content would be stuff like this YouTube, you know, people consume a lot longer video lengths on YouTube than they do on Instagram or TikTok for example, right? So play to the platform's strengths. When it comes to producing your content, jumping back into that now, 
You can change your environments, guys. So like I said, on that, on that personal branding shoot that I did, I had no clients and nothing going on, but I wanted to present the best version of myself to potential clients who I was going to approach through my personal branded profile, right? So I got on the train, I uh, went to a coffee shop, I went to an office lobby, didn't even really have a nice office at the time, so I went to someone else's building and sat in their reception area. Holly again did an amazing job just getting some quick snaps of me and then we're gone. So there's three environments. You can look at landmarks, so if you're trying to you know, attack clients in the local area to get them on board in your business, you might want to use a local landmark so they can have that feeling of, wow, I know where that is, this person was there. That builds that familiarity for you through your personal brand as well. Then the third thing, when it comes to your personal brand, you've got your themes, you know what you're doing, you've got your plan, you've got your different environments. It's all about you now not looking like you've shot all of this content in bulk on the same day at the same time. So what can you do guys? You can change your attire, change what you're wearing, different t-shirts, different blazers, different tops, different bottoms. You could be looking at building some personal branded content in the gym. You could then show yourself in an office sort of attire. You could then show yourself on what you go and wear to take your kids out to the playground. Whatever it is, right? You need to just take different outfits, different looks, so that people don't feel like you've just batch produced this and you're a robot showing the same thing over and over and over again. The best way you can get the most out of your attire, guys, and your different looks is by wearing plain, unbranded logos, you know, no logos, unbranded attire, which if you're wearing it, doesn't you wouldn't really necessarily know, okay, that white shirt, a blazer on top, a white t-shirt, a black t-shirt, people wouldn't necessarily have something stick out where they might think, oh, I wonder if you took that photo at the same time as that photo, even though you're in a different location, people can clock on. Now, it's not about, you know, trying to trick anyone, it's about being interesting, it's about not showing people and becoming predictable with your content strategy. Okay, I see so-and-so, every video is in the same, you know, same attire, it was shot on the same day. It might add tons of value to your marketplace, but at the end of the day, you want to engage and hook your audience in. The best way you can do that, different themes, um, different attire and different environments. Now all of a sudden, you're batch producing this content and you're starting to build some momentum. I hope you're feeling more confident now, by the way, because we're not done yet. Trust me, at the end of this video, you guys are gonna be ready to rock and roll when it comes to producing sick content that converts into sales. The next thing I wanna tell you about your personal brand is what not to do, okay? So, you know, your personal brand is so important because if you do it right, you're going to attract clients when you're sleeping. Everyone's going to be drawn to your business, your brand. They trust that you are who you say you are. You're showing the best version of yourself. You're serving them in your content. You're intriguing them with the, you know, the stuff that you're putting out and they can see your consistency so they can start to trust and rely on you to give them the information that they're looking to learn about. However, when you do it wrong, the first thing and the most important thing that you don't wanna do is damage your reputation, guys. Reputation management in the world that we live in today, social media will tear you to pieces. If you aren't representing the best version of yourself, if you aren't being truthful and honest with your content and how you portray yourself, if you're not being genuine and authentic, you will get found out. And the biggest thing I don't want you to do is lie on social media, okay? I've seen so many people do it. I've seen so many people suffer from it. If you are going to build a personal brand, build it on honesty, truth, values, and who you truly are. Social media personal branding should just be the best version of yourself. It's who you want to be presented as. It's who you want people to be drawn to towards you who are like-minded as. If you're putting out negative, toxic content, you're going to attract negative, toxic people. If you're putting out positive, optimistic, energy-driven content, you're naturally going to attract those types of characters into your life also. So your audience is a mirror and you want to get the best type of people drawn towards you and if you aren't truthful you're not authentic and you're not honest with who you are your content and how you position yourself you are running a really high risk of alienating your audience and also damaging your reputation beyond repair and trust me we've worked with so many clients 
So many people used to inquire with us, they don't anymore because we never work with them anymore. Once your reputation is damaged and gone, there is no, there is no source of traffic that can hide that online, right? If you've made mistakes and you've misrepresented who you are in your personal brand, you've got to pay the consequences for that. So as long as you're not doing that, trust me, that is the beauty of building a personal brand. You're gonna attract people towards you. For example, guys, I literally met someone at the Birmingham headquarters a few days ago in our office building. They'd just moved in, haven't seen them before, so I thought, you know what? We're here, might as well introduce myself. We're in the, the shared space on the first floor. Started talking, told them a little bit about what I do, you know, marketing. They asked me, who am I? I'm like, the founder. It was actually refreshing to um, have the conversation, learn a bit about their business. I had no intention of selling anything or generating any kind of inquiry, by the way. So we're there having this conversation and I'm just like curious, look, let me check you guys out on social. They know we're a social media agency, blah, blah, blah. Only when they actually went away and saw my personal brand on Instagram after I followed them, did they then message me that evening asking if we could help them with one, two, three problems that they're having in their business with generating sales from their, their social media. How crazy is that, guys? Look, right now, I was in front of them. They knew who I was, the founder of an agency. We've been going since 2016. You know all these facts. We've done these amazing things. I'm literally giving them who we are in an elevator pitch. Not so, like, you know, formal, though. And only once they saw who I actually put myself out to be, through my personal brand on Instagram, did these guys actually feel comfortable to reach out and then give me enough trust to have a conversation about what their challenges are with their social media marketing. So with that context there, that story should show you guys, look, even with your personal brand, what it's about is building trust, okay? It's showing your marketplace and the wider network in your lives who you wish to be perceived as, and it's also about building your authority and expert positioning as a thought leader based on what you believe about your industry, where it's going, how it's been, what you've done, what you've accomplished. All of these things can tie into a great personal brand strategy. How do we get revenue off the back of your personal brand? So I've made another video, check it out on the channel about the impact that getting verified on Facebook. So having a blue tick on Facebook really did improve our performance in terms of how many inquiries we get, how many leads we generate, all of that stuff, it did have a big impact with that blue tick. And the same reason why it does that with the blue tick is the same reason why a personal brand is so effective when trying to generate business and sales. You use your personal branded profiles to go and approach potential clients who are looking for your products and services. Why is that important? People trust people. They don't trust logos half as much as they do people. People know when they're dealing with an individual, that person is going to take that reputation with them wherever they go. And that is what your personal brand can be for you guys. Whether you're, even if you're working a job, whether you're leaving a job, going to another form of employment, you take your personal brand with you. The track record of all the work you've done, all the thoughts you've had, all the beliefs, your journey, documenting all of that, that also goes with you. Your personal brand is now your CV. It's your entire catalog. Who you say you are online, guys, is who you are in this world right now. That is the digital world we live in. Don't think for one second that presenting yourself poorly online and building a terrible reputation online from poor content, unorganized, inconsistent, no strategy, no planned content, and being the best in your industry in person those two things can't live harmoniously. You're never going to get the scalability that you can get in your business from building a solid personal brand, even if you are the ultimate expert and the absolute legend that you probably are in your industry now or in the future. So that is what's at stake here, guys. And it's so easy. Like I said, you want to automate this process. You want to make it batch production. You want to build a plan. And then you just want to schedule that content out over 28 days or so so that you can get it automated and off your plate so you can focus on generating sales and revenue from those pieces of content for those of you who are looking for my exact blueprint i want to introduce you to the first 365 this is my book my first ever book 
that has honestly blown my mind with the response. It's our exact step-by-step -step strategy, guys. If you're looking for a blueprint in your business, personal branding, outreach, getting sales, converting more business, it is all documented in this book. And the best part, guys, it's free, okay? Click the link in the description below. Get yourself a free copy right now and it'll be with you in a couple of days. And that is my gift for all of you who have stuck around to the end of this video. Anyway, check out the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. I'm putting out tons of free value on the screen right now. You probably see something relevant. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate when you guys do that. And leave a comment as well. Any thoughts, any feedback, I would love to hear it.